What's up guys? Hannah Marie Strong RD here with the first RD weigh-in of the new year. Happy New Year everyone. To those who are new to the channel, my name is Hannah Marie and I am a registered dietitian who specializes in nutrition edutainment and sustainable lifestyle change. For those who have been following me for a while, exciting life update! I recently passed my national board exam to become a certified health and wellness coach. And what better time of year to get this certification because this is prime time! When it comes to setting goals, setting resolutions, a lot of people, when they set up their resolutions, they don't do it correctly. And that's why most New Year's resolutions fail very early on. But you're not gonna fail because you're watching this video. I'm gonna teach you, as a wellness coach and a registered dietitian, how to do that efficiently. I'm gonna teach you all about how to set up your goal SMART, literally. So SMART is an acronym. It stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable or Achievable, Realistic or Relevant, and Time Bound. Each of these elements come together to form a SMART goal. A SMART goal can be compared to a roadmap. When we have a goal, we can think of it like a destination. You wouldn't just get in your car without knowing how you're going to arrive at the destination. So why do we do that with goals? A lot of people set up a generic goal, but they don't really know how they're going to get there. So by implementing SMART, we basically set up directions that can point the way toward long-term success. Before I talk about SMART goals, I want to take a brief moment to discuss the difference between an outcome goal and a behavioral goal. A lot of clients or potential clients reach out to me because they want to lose weight. But the major issue with losing weight is that it is an outcome goal. So when I say outcome goals, I'm talking about losing a specific amount of weight or reaching a particular goal weight. The problem with this is that it's not always in our control if we're going to achieve that goal. We could work very hard in both the kitchen and the gym, but weight is going to fluctuate. It can fluctuate by as much as three to five pounds any given day due to water retention, hormones, workout intensity, or fiber intake, for example. So it could be frustrating if we're doing everything right, but we get on the scale and we don't see a reflection of our efforts. That's why I like to encourage my clients to focus instead on a behavioral goal, something that is in your control. I may not be able to control the number that the scale reads back to me, but I can control if I'm eating my vegetables, if I'm limiting the amount of times that I'm ordering out every week, if I'm going to the gym, we want to focus on the things that are in our control because that's going to help us stay on the path to success. And these behavioral goals, these little steps that we take every day, they ultimately lead to the outcome goal of weight loss or better health or better performance. When we set a SMART goal for ourselves, we have the outcome in mind, but we want to cater it to our behavioral goal. So it's something that's actually in our grasp. So since it's New Year's and a lot of people have the resolution of losing weight, or maybe it's not New Year's when you're watching this, but you are watching this and you're on my channel, so you probably care about your health or your weight to some extent, I drafted up a SMART goal that relates specifically to weight loss. So as you'll see, I wrote down points for every letter and I'm going to be referencing it throughout the video. Specific. We want to focus specifically on the behaviors that we can change that are in our control. So whether that is a specific element of the diet that we're going to change or a specific type of physical activity that we're going to do. It's not sufficient to say that you are going to improve your diet. What are you going to improve in the diet? What specific element are you going to manipulate that is going to help you achieve your long-term goal of weight loss? I will increase my intake of vegetables and lean protein and decrease my intake of fast food specifically focusing on the vegetables, the proteins, and cutting out the calorie dense things that I know are probably not the best for my health. Measurable. How are we going to measure our progress? I will track three to five vegetable servings and six to eight ounces of lean protein foods a day using a nutrition tracking app after my meals. I'm of elaborating on getting specific by setting exact quantities that I know I'm gonna hit. So I want three to five servings of vegetables and I want six to eight ounces of lean protein. By using a third party app, I'm gonna be able to measure my progress and make sure that I'm definitely getting these servings in every day. There are tons of apps out there. I personally prefer Chronometer, but that could be a little over 
overwhelming if you're a beginner because it really breaks down the micronutrients and elaborates on calories and everything like that. I coach my clients using my fitness pal, so that's another good one. But if you're not interested in looking at calories or looking at any extra data and you think that might be a little overwhelming and you wanna increase your fruits and vegetables or pay particular attention to the food groups that you're getting, I highly recommend downloading the USDA MyPlate app. It's free in the App Store. Um, I'll link it in the description below. And it's a good way to get started and you can actually set your goals within the app. It'll just help you be mindful overall, gives you good ideas for recipes. I encourage you to check it out. Even if you're not trying to lose weight, it's a great great way to improve your overall dietary habits. There are other ways to measure your progress too. You don't even have to download an app if that's not what you're into. You can go old school and just tally up your fruit and vegetable intake uh, with pen and paper. That works too. But having some way of measuring your progress. Achievable. Break up your goal. I will incorporate a vegetable serving into my lunch, dinner, and snack, three servings, and I will eat two to three ounces of lean protein at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So by doing that and having a plan to break up my vegetable consumption, break up the proteins, evenly distribute them throughout the day, I know that I have a plan in place for actually meeting those servings. If you don't break up the goal, it may not be very achievable because some days we're really busy, life gets in the way, it could be the end of the day, and if you failed to plan, now it's 10 p.m. and you have to eat all of your vegetables and you've had no protein. On days like that, you're probably just gonna go to bed and say, screw this goal, and that's not gonna be very conducive to long-term success. Fail to plan, plan to fail. Attainable. Now, a lot of people choose between achievable or attainable, but I'm including everything so that you can really get a whole picture of SMART goal and pick the option that you think would be best for you. But when it comes to setting a goal that's attainable, it's really about being honest with yourself. If you've never monitored your diet before, you've never been intentional about your vegetable consumption or your lean proteins, how realistic is it that you're gonna go from monitoring your diet zero days per week to seven days per week, 365. <laughs> it's not very realistic. It might be overwhelming to hit this goal every single day. To start, I will aim to hit this goal five days of the week. Once I consistently achieve this, I can strive for six days. It's always better to start small and work up. That doesn't mean not to challenge yourself, but don't be so overzealous that you end up setting yourself up for failure. If your goal isn't attainable, it's very easy to lose motivation, and that's where we abandon goals and give them up entirely. So don't do that. Be real with yourself. Realistic. Being realistic and attainable go hand in hand. I really love pizza. It's not realistic to deprive myself of my favorite food. Instead of cutting out pizza entirely, I will practice moderation by allowing myself to eat two slices on pizza night. So I have one particular client who does family pizza night every Friday with his family, and it's really important to him that he can participate in making the pizza and eating it, making the memories with his family. Eating is just as much about nourishing our souls as it is our bodies. Eating brings us together. As his registered dietitian, it is my job to teach him how to fit pizza into his life. If you watch my content, you know that my nutrition philosophy is everything in moderation. There's no need to cut out whole food groups or cut out specific foods, especially if it's something that you enjoy. If you know that you love a particular food, allow yourself to have it. A lot of people think that they have to cut out foods entirely when they have a weight loss goal. It's not very realistic to cut out these foods, cut out these memories. And not only is it not realistic, but it's not very conducive to your overall well-being. And the whole point of losing weight and getting healthier in the first place is to give you a general sense of wellness. That includes eating the foods that you enjoy in moderation. So be realistic. What foods do you like and how can you incorporate those and still make progress towards your goals? Relevant. You can use relevant interchangeably with realistic, but I really like relevant because it comes back to your why. And I've spoken on this topic many a times because it's a very important aspect of goal setting. You have to have a clear reason as to why you want to achieve something in the first place. It has to be relevant to you. Losing weight will help me fit into my clothes more comfortably and increase my self-esteem. Now, it's not so much about I have to lose weight as it is I want to feel better about myself. That's really gonna help when motivation dies. 
and it doesn't matter how dedicated you are, even the most committed fitness freaks, gym rats, health nuts, we all falter. Life happens. I'll be honest, I do not want to eat vegetables every day. <gasps> and there are some days where I miss my targets, even as a registered dietitian. Or there are days where I want to overeat junk food. I'm a human just like everybody else, you know. But I revisit my why. Why am I being healthier in the first place? Why do I care about my diet overall? Again, I am a registered dietitian. I need to lead by example. It's relevant to my life, and I can revisit that whenever I'm struggling. Identify why your goal is relevant to you, and keep that in the back of your mind. It's gonna help you stay more disciplined and increase your likelihood of succeeding. And finally, time bound. I will check in with my registered dietitian in three months to make sure my dietary habits are conducive to healthy weight loss. Not everybody has a registered dietitian, but you should. <laughs> but this could be setting up your six month well visit or your annual checkup with your primary care physician, redoing your blood work on a particular date so that you can see if these habits that you've been cultivating are actually moving you toward your desired outcome. If you wanna focus on heart health, for example, and you set your blood work appointment for June 1st, then there's no getting out of that. On June 1st, you have to get your blood drawn and you have to see where your cholesterol is, where your blood lipids are. That's gonna increase your motivation leading up to that appointment because you know that you've gotta check in more or less. Setting timelines, setting deadlines is gonna keep you going, keep you on the course because you know you've gotta do it by X date. Deadlines are very effective. I would know. I went to grad school. <laughs> Anybody who went to college knows <laughs> deadlines get her done. <laughs> so you could see how following the steps of a well-outlined SMART goal can get you to your final destination, your final outcome goal. I am recording this video around New Year's, so it's a very popular time to set resolutions. If you've set a resolution for yourself, or maybe you're watching this at a different time of the year, but you're getting started on your health journey and you've recently set a goal for yourself, I encourage you to take whatever your outcome goal is and change it to, first of all, be more behavioral based. So something that you can do every day to strive toward your ultimate long-term goal, your outcome goal, um, but also to workshop it into a SMART goal. Have those specific steps that are measurable, attainable, achievable, relevant, um, realistic, time bound. Hold yourself to a timeline, set your deadlines. The more specific, the more steps that you can take, the more plans that you can put in place, the more likely you are to succeed long term. If you do have a generic goal and you need some help workshopping it, let me know what it is in the comments section below and we can work together and workshop it into something that's a little more smart. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more nutrition edutainment. And if you're just getting started on your health journey and you aren't really sure where to start or what goal to set for yourself, check out this video for some inspiration.